A lot of questions for the government after yesterday's tragedy. They spent the week trying to convince us, of course, they've changed their mind on crime and how to, tough they need to be. But how many flags out of yesterday will come back to haunt them? The Minister of Police, Ginny Anderson, is with us. A very good morning to you. Good morning, Mike. Uh, so a tragedy yesterday, and um, we pass on our thoughts and condolences, as we have done all morning with the Police Commissioner, and, uh, and I'm sure you would want to do the same. Exactly, yeah. Those uh, those two New Zealanders who lost their lives yesterday, I'd just like to pay respects uh, to their families who uh, I'm sure will be having an incredibly tough time right now. Should we still feel safer? Uh, what I have had, that was the, uh, actually before I answer that, I'd just like to acknowledge the work of the police. I've been uh, alongside of them over the last day and seen uh, the huge amount of bravery that went on yesterday to charge into that scene. Uh, I have no doubt about it that their quick action saved lives yesterday. I think so. Uh, so my first question was exactly that to the police commissioner uh, in terms of what's happening. He reassured me that not only are police integrated with the whole of the FIFA World Cup uh, and how that's operating, but there are extra officers in the CBD right now. And to no, make I'm not sure talking about specifically. I'm talking about your comment whether we should all feel safer because of your approach to crime in this country. Uh, so you're talking about all New Zealanders right yeah, now? Yeah, all New Zealanders. Should so, we feel safe? Is this a safe country that you are oversteering at the so, moment? So my comment was, my full quote of that, uh, was that uh, we feel safer with... 1,800 extra mm. police. So now that we have a more well-resourced front yeah. line that is able to give the actions we saw yesterday to get there within 11 minutes of the phone call, to have that No one's police. questioning they did brilliantly. How many people are dead? Uh, two people have died. Exactly. Should we feel safer? Uh, look, I think, uh, Mike, I can hear what you're saying, uh, and I really know that New Zealanders are feeling it right now. But that's exactly why we need to make sure we continue to resource our front line, and we need to continue to respond to those areas that cause us that cause New Zealanders real harm, which is family violence as well. Should that bloke have been in jail? Uh, that's one of the questions that I want to know, well, and that's you, you one can of the. It because you're the minister of police, should he be in jail? There's... I've read the notes. Have you read the notes? The case notes. Uh, yes, I've seen those. Should, we, should he be in jail? That uh, we, I want to see not just those case notes, but I want to understand all of the other information, and that's exactly what the police investigation what will be doing. Can do I just finish? To, Sorry, sure. Mike. Uh, so I, I, what I want to see is that full police investigation and what is unearthed. So there was 80 witnesses at the scene that were um, spoken to and interviewed by police yesterday. And in addition to that, what I'm interested in seeing is the corrections review. So the Department of Corrections will be going through piece by piece to understand if there were any red flags there that were missed. The red flag would be he wasn't in jail. That uh, that decision is made by a judge at sentencing on the factors in front of them, and I don't have those factors in front of me I to did. be able well, to... Well, I've, I've seen enough. He, he beat the bejesus out of a woman, strangled her, hit her again with some scissors and a bottle, and he had form, and he's not in jail. I understand your concerns and I understand that New Zealanders are not uh, con are concerned about that level of violence, but what we need to be sure of is that we have all of the information. What, and that's, what can more? I just finish? Sorry, Mike. And that is exactly what the investigation will do. So yes, you have some information there, but there will be other information and I'm only prepared to make a full judgment on what uh, went wrong what when we understand do you need what went to wrong. See? The, 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 cri the crime is the crime. And it was once again ne negotiated down to nothing. And under your government, what you seem to insist on doing is having fewer people in prison. And once you get a prison sentence below two years, it's an ankle bracelet. This was discounted down below two years. I can hear what you're saying. It's a, don't, don't hear what I'm saying. It's a statement. They're statements of fact. Well, if you'd let me finish, I could explain to you what I was going to say. So there has been no changes to prison terms since our government has been. And those decisions, whether it's home detention or the sentence, is made by a judge no, at I understand sentencing. That. Everyone understands so that. So a judge is independent from the government, and it's for a good reason oh, we, we that get, a judge we get, is independent. We get all of that, but the judge operates on the steer from the government, the no, law, the, really? the, the, from the law of the day. And the law of the day says once you get to two years jail, you can get a home home detention. And the law of the day has not changed in those I'm areas. I'm not arguing whether the law of the day has changed. I'm, what, what I'm asking you is you've been in government for six years now. If there's a problem, and clearly there's a problem, why haven't you done something about it? 
the de- decreases, the two main decreases of that prison population decline, the two areas that have declined the most, have been a low-level uh, drug offences like cannabis and traffic offences. They're the two main drops. OK, let me give you these statistics. 7% increase in uh, acts intended to cause injury. 121% increase in serious assaults, 9% increase in common assaults, 6% increase in sexual assaults, 19% increase in aggravated sexual assaults against a drop in prison population of 20%. Crimes up, prison populations down. That's on you. Uh, I take on board that as completely unacceptable. I will never argue that. What, your, your record's unacceptable? No, the level of crime we are seeing in New Zealand is unacceptable. Right. And that's exact. No, I'd like to finish. But that is exactly why we have a police service that is better resourced. That is exactly why we are putting far more resource into family violence. And this guy was and round, that is, and and this that guy is was also, rounded up. And this that is also why, up. that is also why those offenders, those serious repeat offenders, are brought before the courts and prosecuted by police. Yes. And only last, the, can the, I just the, point out, Mike, Look. I do want to finish. Come on. Um, I want to say that just last week we've provided an additional twenty-six million for additional prosecutors. Money doesn't buy the, the money doesn't solve this problem. This guy should have been in jail. By but look, on anyone's measure outside of a judge and seemingly your government, this guy should have been in jail. And he wasn't. And because he wasn't, he was on an ankle bracelet. And there's a ninety-seven percent increase in the number of people absconding from ankle bracelets. 97%. Then he goes and gets a gun. Do you reckon he had a gun legally? No. Do you reckon the gun registers worked? No. He goes and kills people. What part of that don't you understand? I understand every single step of that, Mike, and that's why we've brought in a gun register and it's only been live since last month. Since last month, we've had 11,000 weapons that have been registered through that registry. And we know for a fact that people steal guns, people uh, buy them legitimately and then give them on. So by the fact that we have a live gun registry, we'll assist police to understand where those illegal weapons are and take them off criminals. You would still defend the discounting of sentences, the cultural reports the starting at in excess of three years worth of prison time discounted to a handful of months in Home D. You, Mike, th- you think that's a good justice system? Mike, that is a decision made by a judge, not by the government. The government does not interfere in what judges determine at sentencing. Does Yet, the- I would like to finish, sorry. What the government does, just to spell it out, is that we set uh, we set uh, new offences. So we've created a new offence uh, this week for ram raiding. So what the government does is define the offence and the set time. That then gets handed over to the judges and they decide with the circumstances before them at that given time right. what that sentence should so be. So this is really the judge's fault? They, there is a separation between government and judges for some good reason. So if, we don't have a say over what judges right. give. So you're, 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 you're laying the blame on this judge who, di- who did this and all the other judges who do exactly the same thing. Judge Cassidy the other day had a ram raider in front of a 19-year-old. Uh, two charges, maximum sentence of 10 years in jail on each charge. And the judge said people are sick of it, had a guts full of it. And the kid ended up with a handful of months in Home D with an ankle bracelet. So you're trying to defend your record in an election campaign of being soft on crime. You've got judges who are clearly soft on crime and it's all their fault or you don't want to do something about it. Or what is it you are trying to tell us that this is just the way it is? It was for that very reason. And we've listened to New Zealanders. I've met with uh, those business owners who have been uh, experienced high levels of retail crime. It's for that re- very reason that we've introduced a new offence specific to ram raiding but, with a 10-year penalty. I don't, think, I don't think you're penalty. hearing my point. The point is you can introduce anything you want. If it's not going to be enacted in court in a way that New Zealanders see as acceptable, you're wasting your time. There is a separation between I, I government Everyone and judiciary. The judges are independent. That. Everyone right? understands that. Then maybe you need to do something more about the sentences. Maybe they need to be, instead of 10 years, they need to be 20 years. Or maybe you need to change the law and instead of when you get to two years, you get an ankle bracelet. Actually, when you get to two years, it's two years jail. Maybe you need to do something about that instead of blaming everybody else but yourselves. Is that a question? <laughs> Yeah, should you do something more than you are? Well, I would argue this week that we introduced a new offence specific to ram raiding and also ensuring that 12 and 13-year-olds who previously the police uh, were unable to prosecute now are able to. So I would say we are doing something and that was something that has been done. Even though that was superficial, venal and about as transparent as anyone's ever seen and a blatant political grab for votes. 
I don't think that's true at all. I refute that. I've gone out and listened to those communities, and that is one of the main things that will help, uh, I think, reduce and deter those ram raiders from repeat offending. And in totality, as we sit here this morning, is the Minister of Police. In fact, really, the Minister of Justice should be here. I mean, you got put up, but but it's the Minister of Justice Department. Well, to be to be fair, Mike, I was invited here to speak about the no, no, incident that happened yesterday. No, that's, that's and as, I'm not as saying... the Minister of Police, it is appropriate that I'm here to talk about uh, the two fatalities, uh, the three, including okay. the offender. Okay. As we sit here this morning, and as you go into this election campaign, do you defend your law and order record as being successful, robust, professional, well thought through, and delivering in a way that New Zealanders would think is the right thing. Law and order is a complex issue. There's no doubt about that. There are a whole lot of factors going on there. We have always been strong on preventing crime, on making sure that... Even though crime's up. Family violence, uh, mental health, addiction, alcohol, all of those drivers of crime have been where our bread and butter have lied to make sure that those people aren't repeat offending. What we see now, particularly in youth offending, is there is a small cohort of hardcore repeat offenders that those preventative measures are simply not working on. And that is largely the reason why this week we've announced a range right. of measures to crack that down on that those That doesn't answer the question. Offenders. Do you defend your law and order record? Have you done a good job in this? And is yesterday's incident an outworking of that success? Uh, my job as Minister for Police is to make sure our police service is well resourced. The police are better resourced than they have ever been. Even though? That even though yesterday... I'd like to finish, Mike. That resourcing, uh, I'm sure your listeners would like to hear this, uh, that resourcing enabled the quick response we saw yesterday. That response enabled within 11 minutes... Nobody... Let me finish. No, 11 minutes Jenny, of a phone call and with nobody, four minutes... Nobody Four minutes after that, we had AOS response. tomorrow. But that's my point, Mike. The fact that I have our frontline resourced Jenny, means you're we miss, get a you're quick You're missing response. the point. They responded brilliantly. Two people are still dead. That's the point. Not the response, the result. Don't you understand that? I do understand that. And you're at least in part responsible for it. Uh I want to say that the police response yesterday was well resourced, they acted quickly, and I have no doubt about it that their quick action enabled lives to be saved yesterday. On that we're agreed. Are you saying that even though they're well resourced, even though they responded brilliantly, even though they saved lives yesterday, the people who didn't have their life saved... That's just the way it we is. We can always do better, and that's why we have an investigation to understand how the system can be strengthened and we don't make the same mistakes again. Appreciate your time. Police Minister Ginny Anderson, 11 away from 8.